because it works now, yeah. So I would like to thank Hossein for the invitation uh, here to IMPA and this opportunity to visit uh, Brazil in probably the best time of the year because it's not too hot and not too cold. Um, <coughs> let's see, I want, I should get the correct page, page of my notes, so. Um, let's set it up, so. Take the polynomials in the same four variables, and now you can take an open uh, UD. These are all polynomials such that the surface defined by F is smooth. Uh, this is smooth. And F is in SD. So these are the smooth hypersurfaces, uh, smooth surfaces in V3. And inside this UD, you have NLD, which are all smooth surfaces, such that the PK number is at least two. So rho of x, it's by definition the rank of the Nino Safiri group. But if x is MP3 and smooth, it's also the rank of the, the Picard group. Okay, now get a conjecture by Neuter, but said that if D is four, then The generic surface should be have become number one. So there are surfaces which are in UD, not in the neutral left shed locus, and there's a theorem by left sheds. Which shows this. And that is the reason why we call it the neutral left sheds theorem. And already from the proof of left yet you will see that this NLD has countably many components. And, then, and if you assume left yet one one, these are um, these are also algebraic subvarieties. And then much later, in the, at the end of the 80s, you got more explicit theorems by by Green and Vosen. And so what did they show? Let's see where. What I need. So let L be a reducible component of NLD. And D is at least four. What do you have? The co-dimension of L should be at least d minus three. So there's one. If d is at least five, and the co-dimension of L is precisely d minus three, then L parameterizes surfaces containing a line. And then the number three uh, if D is at least five and the co-dimension of L is not D minus three, then it is at least code then the co-dimension of L is at least 2d minus 7. And if d is at least 7, 6, then the co-dimension of L at most 2d minus 7 implies that L parameterizes 
either serves as containing a line or serves as containing an atomic. Okay. So this is fairly classical. Those results, they, they are from the time I was in elementary school, so they are from me a long time ago. Uh, so what happens next, so I will not continue with the story. So you can go on for this for a bit. So you can look to components which have color dimension about 3D. And if D is big enough, these are components which parameterize uh, surfaces containing a cubic curve, and you can go on and go on and go on. There's one issue here, that as soon as you go to 2D, you get back bigger than 2D minus 7. Uh, I make a mistake. This is called dimension 2D minus 5. So if you, if you go on here, if you continue here and you go to bigger component, you get uh, components of bigger code dimension, you get non-reduced components. And that is making life a little bit complicated. Good, so this is one, this is a starting point of, of, of this explicit neutral left theory. On the next blackboard, I will write a different theorem. This is more recent, it's still 15, almost 15 years ago. It says the following thing, so if x is in P4, a nodal hypersurface, so nodal 3 volt, um, of degree D, uh, then if the fourth Betty number of x is bigger than one, then x has at least d minus one squared nodes. And if x has precisely d minus one, d minus one squared nodes, then X contains a, a two plane. Okay. So, a priori, those two theorems do not have anything to do with each other. The, the context is completely different. So, I have a nodal three fold. I, if the fourth betting number is at least, at least one, then it has at least d minus one squared nodes. And if you have precisely d minus one squared nodes, I need to plane, f I need to, plane to have this inequality. So for the moment, this has, those two, two, two results don't have anything to do with each other. Uh, also, the proof of, of, of Chelsov here doesn't have anything to do with the proof here. And there's a conjecture by Chidi Beto Genera, uh, which says that XMP4 and nodal 3 volt of degree D at least 3. Uh, so, yeah, so if H for X is at least one, uh, and X has at most two times D minus two times D minus one nodes, then X contains either a plane, a two plane, or a product service. Uh, this is the, um, it was open for a long time.
Good. So, um, most of you prefer to work with smooth predictive writing, so I will make some comments here about this, this condition here. <coughs> so, what you learn in uh, somewhat advanced algebraic geometry is that if you take an X and hypersurface in Pn, which is smooth, then the betting number of x is the betting number of Pn for all i except n minus 1 and 2n. It's a typical thing you, you learn your students at some point in, in advanced algebraic geometry. Um, now, if I now get rid of smooth, so all this is, this is a combination of left shed's hyperplane theorem and Poincare duality. Good. Now, smoothness uh, is not required for left shed's hyperplane theorem. It's only, it's only needed for concrete duality. So if x in p4 has isolated singularities, then you still have that hix is hipn for i up to n minus 2. <laughs> Just a single object. I'm not interested in uh, these generalizations. I, I work with the. Um, so, what happens now if you have isolated singularity? So, y for the, the Lefschetz hyperplane, is still true. So, uh, you get it in small degrees, but you also get. Uh, if you get an equal, this equality, uh, two n is never going to work, and then you get n plus the dimension of the singular locus. So, say that, so for i, at least, uh, at least. N plus the dimension of the singular locus. Let's just see if this is going to work now. Plus one. So you have. So if it is smooth, you, you, you're missing out this equality in, in middle degree. If you have isolated singularities, you miss it out in, in the middle degree and, and one above. If you have a, a, curve, a curve of singularities, then you can miss it out in even in three degrees. So for these three volts, so x in P4, a noble three volts, what you will find is that h0x is h2x is h6x is one dimensional and the first and the fifth better number are zero. And now the, the crucial point is some, some technical result from the 1980s is that this fourth better number is one plus Two quantities I will now explain. So, uh, so let's say so sigma are all the points on X such that X has a node. Uh, so I forgot to say so. Yeah, so I have here a node also. So these are the other points where X has a node. Uh, and I. It's just the idea of this, of the set where you have nodes. And S 
and here's the number of nodes. So H4, it has always the hyperplane class. And if it has something more, this means that the, that the linear system of 2D minus 5 polynomials going through the nodes of X has defect. So it's uh, bigger, bigger than it should be. Or if you want to say it in even more classical language, the conditions imposed by the nodes on 2D minus 5 polynomials, they are dependent. So there are, you could leave out, uh, out one condition at least. Okay, there's one thing, and then the second thing you, so I want to save that for a moment, so. So for a nodal three volt, what you can do is I can take well devices on X up to linear equivalence Consider this thing, consider the Cartier devices of the linear equivalence. Um, this quotient turns out to be torsion free. That is, that is a, a surprise. So if you, if you do a little bit more complicated singularities, you will have torsion. So torsion freeness is de really depending on, on this nodal condition. Uh, now in the rank of this thing, it's just, H for X minus one, which basically, which means in other terms that the fourth homology of X with field coefficients is generated by classes of, of algebraic surfaces. That is more, the more topological interpretation of this line here. Good. That was some, some comments. Um, so let's see. What did I hear? So the theorem I want to discuss now um, it contains the following things. So so this conjecture of Chiliberto Di Gennaro is true for D. At least seven, and so I was too lazy to prove to prove the remaining cases. There's no reason to assume this, but uh, so there's one thing. Um, and now the the proof of this theorem reproves reproves. Uh, also, Chelsov theorem which is not so surprised because it, it's, it's basically Chile better is in, it's basically in generalization and implies the following theorem uh, so now take uh, I'm running out of, of uh, so D if I take polynomials in five variables of degree D uh, so that's then D sub D and I want that the zero has, has isolated singularities Uh, and the H4 is at least two-dimensional, 
then um, the largest component of DD has co-dimension I didn't want to calculate it because it follows from a much bigger theorem, but d plus 2 choose 3 minus 6. And parameterizes defaults containing a plane. Depends on what you write here. If I would, would write no go here, rather than isolated, I would have finitely many components. As soon as I go to isolated components, um, I will have infinitely many components. And so way deep, really in the end, you will, uh, you will find a very weird, weird components because I can take a surface in uh, oh, for H4, no, no, for H4, I think this may have finitely many components. If you if you replace H4 by uh, shell one over pick, so if you only are looking for divisors, then it has infinitely many components. So it depends whether you want want to look for for homology homology or whether you want to look for divisors. Uh, but for Nodo, that is the same. So good. Um, So to be honest, this is not a. Uh, this is also a, res a result of four or five years ago, but I prefer to talk about this rather than about what happens afterwards because it's get, getting much more technical. So I will give you an idea how you can prove this, and then I will tell you how you can even push it further. Uh, let's see. So what's the basic idea? So if you look to the uh, to, to the most, to most of the proofs of this type of, type of statements, uh, you, you start doing by some, by some uh, deformation theory arguments, doing some topology, and in the end you find an, an you will find an, an Artinian and Gorenstein algebra, and then you start to work with, an, with Artinian and Gorenstein algebras. And so the idea now is also to find a similar algebra on this side. Uh, Good, so so the proof, so X is now a nodal surface. D for technical reasons I assume D equals D at most three. So D is one is, is trivial because it's smooth and D is two is also trivial because it's a quadric. Uh, and now what he said S is a number of nodes. Sigma is a set of nodes and I is the ideal of nodes of sigma. And so we assume that H4 of X is at least one, or at least two. So, and we know that H4 of X is S minus the Hilbert function of I in degree 2D minus 5. Uh, let's see. Now, 
take L uh, a general linear form. So, and then I can consider the S modulo, so big S. the coordinate ring of Pn, and now you can consider S modulo i in degree t minus 1. I can multiply with L, then I end up in degree t, and the co-kernel is S modulo I L in degree T. And this is a new ideal which I call I sub H. It's ideal in dimension one less. And now this, this thing is injective because L is, gen is, is general. So I can find L's for which this is not injective, but if I do it at random, it is injective. Good. And so what, what do you get from this? So this is also things I used to do in even in undergraduate uh, algebra. The Hilbert function of this ideal i in degree t is just the sum of the Hilbert function of this ideal with one generator more, summing from zero up to this degree t. Good, so that's one thing. The next thing you So i is the ideal, is the ideal of a finite set. So, so, uh, so what you know is that for t very big, the Hilbert function of i in degree t is just the number of nodes. Okay, and we know also that. in 2D degree minus 5 is not already S. And so the conclusion here is that there exists a T at least of degree 2D minus 4 such that H I, H I H of T is non-zero. And now, uh, also very easy, that means that for all t in degree of 2, 2d minus 4, this, 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 ID, this Hilbert function cannot be zero. So once it is zero, it remains zero forever. So. Good. What can you do now? So. So which one? This one? So this was, uh, this one, it is, uh, we are looking, H4X is the difference between the number of nodes and this thing, so plus one. So H4X minus one is this thing. There was one formula I, I recalled at the beginning. We are assuming that H4X is at least two, so this thing is not, not zero, so this thing has to be negative of a small s and then you get here you, you come here good so what what can i do now so pick a subspace j inside c x0 x4 to the minus 4 
with two properties, so such that uh, the, the 2D minus 4 part of IH is contained in J, and the Hilbert function of J in 2D minus 4 is called dimension 1. So we know that i of h in degree 2d minus 4 is not everything. So I can always find such a, such a space. Uh, good. And now you can use this to define an uh, Athenian, uh, an Athenian Gorenstein algebra by setting jt to be the following thing. So these are all f in all polynomials of degree t, such that f times s 2d minus 4 minus t is contained in j 2d minus 4 if t is smaller than 2d minus 4. And it's just everything. Or TD minus 4. Uh, and then J, so this thing, the direct sum of all JTs is an ideal. Good. That was the. By construction, we have that Sj t times S modulo j to the minus 4 minus t in S modulo j to the minus 4. This is isomorphic with the complex numbers, and this is a perfect pairing. That's how we defined this idea of j of t. Um, what do we know even more? So our x was a singular hyperservice uh, and somewhere if you go far, really far back you know that the locus of nodes is the, the ideal of the set of nodes is contained in J so the the partials of F they are contained in GD minus 1 and this has a finite base locus. Okay. Uh, but we have also L inside J. And L is general. So the total base locus in the greedy minus one is empty. So what do we have? We have an Athenian Gorenstein algebra. It's a coordinate ring modulo an ideal. And the ideal is base point three in degree d minus one. So now you are li literally at a point in, in Green's proof of the uh, biggest component of the Neutralevsky's locus. So what can you do now? So there is. Uh, so we have this. So this fa the fa this fact. So gd minus one base point three and hj two d minus four equals one. Y you know by a result of Macaulay that this implies 
at hj t is 2d minus 3 minus t for t between d minus 1 and 2d minus 4. That is an, it's a result of Macaulay, so it, it's coming from commutative algebra. Um, but so I think the majority of people of you may have seen Green's proof. So in Green's proof of the biggest component of an Atlassian's locus, he, he's explaining how you can get this, uh, this inequality. Good. And now you can elaborate a little bit on this. So actually, if you read the proof very careful, uh, this d minus 1 is a bit too much, so you can even do a little bit better and make it in d minus 2. And then you have a Gorenstein, you have the duality here. So Gorenstein duality. And so you will find that ATAT is at least 1 plus T for. T is zero up to D minus three. And now you'll find that H I so that the number of nodes this was H I in degree was at least H I S H I in degree two D minus four. This is the sum from zero to two D minus four H I H of J. And this is at least the sum of the J's. So the sum J is zero to D minus four H J small J. And now it's an, an easy exercise to to sum this and this. And that is just d minus 1 squared. Good. Uh, this only rep reproves uh, Chelsoff theorem. So I, I was much more ambitious in my theorem. Good. So at least one of, one of the things we, we managed to do well, <laughs> ah, so, uh, yeah, so that I also need to do that. That's cool. Um, so, so in the Chelsea case, it's easy. So, if you have equality. So if I have d minus one squared uh, squared nodes, and then I need equality everywhere here. So here, 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 and and here, etc. So I have equality equality of so S if d minus one squared, that implies equality everywhere. And then it's relatively easy because you see that uh, I has two generators in degree one. Uh, just because be, just because of the equalities here you have here, you, you get that the Hilbert function of all in degree one here is three. So you have two two elements uh, of degree one in I, and that means that X is a surface with d minus 1 squared nodes contained on a plane p uh, so I mean, it's, a three it's a three volt with on this plane p and then it's just just basically basic algebraic geometry to show that P is contained in X. Good. 
So then, then you have chats of incomplete generality. So how can you, how can you go on? Um, so that was the first thing. So the Chili better did in Aro. You change it a little bit. So the first observation is is that if you go back to this ideal J, and if it is in degree d minus four, that is at least. to the minus six. Yeah. No, this, this is not the good. Yeah, so if you, if you have this, then, then you can use this Macaulay result to prove that HJ at least 2t plus 1 for for all the t's in this range and then also you get, get you get something for hj to the minus 4 minus t is at least 2t plus 1 for this range of t so you get an, an, a lower bound for hj of t in almost all t uh, then you're missing out. So this this starts at d and goes all the way up to, to d minus four. So you're you're missing out d minus one, d minus two, and d minus three. But you can also bound them, and then then some easy computation gives you that. Uh, as here, using this series of inequalities you have uh, you have on this side, you will find that s is bigger than 2 d minus 2 d minus 1. And that is, uh, that, will, that, that will say that, that in this, this case, you have more nodes than, than which is relevant for Chile beta dinaro and you're, you're okay. In the other case, so, uh, otherwise, I know that it is d minus four. It is uh, it's at least d minus three, and it is at most two uh, d minus seven. And now you copy. You copy basically for the proof. And you show that uh, since this is a Gorenstein algebra, you have two options. Either G is a complete intersection ideal uh, of multi degree 1, 1, 1, D minus 1, D minus 1. Or G is a complete intersection of the degree one, one, two, D minus two, D minus one. So this is again the Chelsoff case. So you have a plane. And this is then this will give you the the quadric surface case. So, uh, so in, in this first 
So when Fosem proved that uh, the second largest component of the Neutralization Locus were surfaces with a cone, she basically had to show that, 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 that you had two possibilities for the uh, athenian gorenstein algebra, and one was this and one was that. The only difference is she did it in P, P3, so she didn't have the first one. But that's the, that's the only big difference. Good. Um, so this gives you uh, this gives you then then Chile Bertel de Dinaro. Um, then about the deformations. So, so you had, you had here the, the three faults with isolated singularities. And inside here, you had the ones that had H4 at least two. Good. And now if I take here, irreducible component. So this is about deformations. You take an irreducible component, then and I take an, a, a surface in X which is sufficiently general. Then the tension space on the this locus at x is also the tension space at x of the equisingular deformation space of x. OK, and now I'm getting in too much technicalities. So if I have a nodal surface and I deform it as a nodal surface, then this, this number H4 doesn't change. So if I would consider here only nodal surfaces, then I only had to, I had only to ask that X deforms uh, and the nodes deform with it. If you have more complicated singularities, uh, then a singularity is, has also moduli. So you have to, to deal with that. And the way to, now to require that, that it, it is, that number goes well. It's one way is to look for equisingular deformations. Um, another point is that in the nodal case, so if is nodal, then the tension space to the equi singular deformation space uh, is The deep part of the ideal of the singular locus. And so the previous argument argument uh, bounds the the codimension of it. And so we have a bound we have a bound on the tension space of L in case this x is a nodal surface, a nodal three volt. If x has isolated singularities, it's not nodal, 
Um, then we have two ideals. We have one ideal for this condition h for x being bigger than one. And you have one ideal for the condition for uh, for the equisingular deformation space. Um, and I, I'm running out of time. So let's say that it is. So one of the ideas is included in the other. And I'm always mixing this up because you are doing those operations too many times, times in a row. But one is included in the other. So if you find an upper bound for for this, for the Hilbert function, or for the ideal corresponding for h4 equals 1, uh, bigger than 1, you'll also find an upper bound for the, the quarter dimension of the equation of the deformation space. And so in the end, you get an upper bound for the dimension of Txl. And then you, show, then you can show that this upper bound is precisely the co-dimension, this is precisely the dimension of the locus of three faults containing a plane. Mm, okay. So that, that in the final part was probably a little bit too fast. Um, what's the, say, the commercial story behind this? So this original proof of Cheltsov, it was very isolated. It did, did only work for P3, uh, for P4. So for three faults in P4 with nodes. And this method, it already, it, first of all, it gives you this conjecture of Chiliberto. Um, but this method can be used in any, uh, to generalize um, to higher dimensions or other, other ambient varieties, but there's also another Lefschetz theorem. So I can also do hypersurfaces in um, P2K. Uh, you can do to, uh, so some toric varieties, some weighted predictive spaces. You can do uh, also complete intersections. And then just, just, in the, just because that you can, in, in any of the examples, you can always reduce to this Artinian and Gorenstein algebra. And that's one thing we, we really, really know very well. Good, so I think I should stop here, so thank you. <laughs>